Antibiotic residues and animal waste, occurrence and degradation in conventional agriculture waste management practices. And I can share the link of this and 30 other studies that look at the manures that are being used in organic agriculture come from capos, they come from pig slaughtering, they come from pig blood, all this kind of stuff. That's, that's where it comes from. It's not a part of it. That's where the fertility comes from these days. Um, of course, there are exceptions to this rule. There are wonderful organic farms that grow their own animals, that use their own manure, that use um, cover crops exclusively. But by and large, especially when you go to the store, like Fox Farm, Organic, Cal Organic, all the big organic growers, they use this kind of fertility. Um, and in that manure, these antibiotics go through the animal. Does anybody know why antibiotics are fed to animals? It is, it's prophylactic against diseases. It is also specifically for putting on weight. They found that they added many different types of antibiotics to the feed ration at a low dose. The animals started putting on weight twice as fast, or 40% faster, right? So. The statistic is like 85 or 90% of antibiotics sold in the US are used in animal agriculture. Yeah. And so, so animal antibiotics in organic meat, they're not allowed, right? You can't, that, that's the idea, is that if an animal organically uh, produced is fed antibiotics, they can't be marketed, they can't be slaughtered and sold as organic. Or, uh, so they have antibiotics, they can't be organic. The antibiotics that are in the manure, on the other hand, come out the animal, dry, whatever, completely as active as they went in or even the metabolites of antibiotics have shown to still have antibiotic resistance. We've got tetracycline, trimethoprim, <laughs> sulfonamide, um, lincosamide, just literally dozens of them that are fed to all these different animals. They go into the soil. Bummer, the plants take them right up into their actual cells, are still active when we eat them. So we are getting a very low dose of antibiotics that went into the capos when we eat organic food from the grocery store. That's not even a controversial statement. The science is all available online. You could Google it. It's totally available information. So you may actually be getting more of a low dose of antibiotics derived from the industrial system when you eat organic vegetables than you would if you ate organic meats. In addition to that, conventional industrial meat, there's a lot of antibiotics. True, yeah. yes. Conventional vegetables probably have none of these antibiotics because they use all synthetic fertilizers and they don't really use manures anymore. Um, not that that's a plug for conventional <laughs> produce, but you know, pick your poison, literally. <laughs> so in addition to that, while I'm on the topic of this, which is not comfortable for me, you know, I'm, I'm an organic farmer, um, I don't use this stuff anymore because reading this stuff is so nightmarish. Um, plastic mulch, we used to use plastic mulch on our farm just like every other organic farm and I quit because it was so terrifying what is happening. Um, these are plastic mulch, black, green, red, whatever, these different colors of plastics are laid out, you cover the soil, it's amazing, you save all this money, you don't have to do the weed control, it warms the soil faster, you get better yields. And unfortunately, they off-gas phthalates. Um, and not only do they off-gas them, those phthalates are taken up into crops. And they're, again, go and search on PubMed, you can search on NCBI, um, Google Scholar, you can find dozens of papers where they do this in pots, they do it in the field, they find that phthalates, other groups of uh, carcinogenic chemicals are taken up by the crops very high rates in, uh, the highest they found, I think, were acute, uh, cucurbits, so cucumbers, squash, all that kind of stuff, which is all grown on plastic. Um, in addition to that, there are major sources of erosion that is, goes unmeasured. If you measure the weight of plastic mulch that goes onto the soil versus the weight of plastic mulch that is removed from the farmer's field and thrown into the landfill, it can weigh a ton per acre more than when it went on. What's all that? Soil particles. 
So we have to add another ton of uh, erosion to our measurements. And, you know, good luck going to the grocery store at least and finding an organic farm that doesn't use this stuff. So, again, bummer, but I guess we should all grow more food at home? Mm -hmm. It's kind of the only answer. Um, or, you know, try to support new farms that are coming up or farms to make transitions away from these things. I think 30 years ago, as organic was sort of starting, you know, getting started, or maybe 40 years or whatever, um, I don't think most chemical farmers really knew how bad the chemicals were, and now we kind of look back on that and we have an idea that a lot of these chemicals are pretty bad. I think in the next, hopefully it's soon, but maybe it's another decade or whatever, we get wise to this and realize that, you know, there, there are still contaminants getting in, and they're actually getting in from the exact same industries into these foods. Yeah. I know that there's been some type of development on making plastic multi materials from plant-based yeah. plastics. Have you explored any of those options? Yeah, we've tried them on my farm. Um, there are really not many that are like certified for use in organic farms. And the reason being that they still use uh, synthetic uh, adhesives. So the NOP has not certified. I don't, maybe they certified one, I don't know. But, uh, so they have synthetic adhesives. They're probably a little bit better. Uh, I found they didn't really work very well for me. I'm sure they're gonna improve that. So, yeah, totally. It may, it may be a saving grace, who knows. But, you know, that just, the, the, the feedstock for those are, still from other places that are like conventional corn is used, ground up, becomes the new plastic, what's in that, I don't know. Um, you know, it, it may be that we actually have to live the permaculture maxim that small, slow solutions are better and not use the same system with a different at some point. What about um, water and refrigeration type plastics? I don't even know, man. <laughs> you should open up that can of worms. It prob it's probably, you know, we get thrown away after a season. Oh yeah, it's the same deal. Uh, it's a, you know, a black plastic that is in, it's usually buried underneath the, uh, the plastic mulch. So I don't know how hot it gets or whether it literally gets more contaminants into the water. They may have already looked into that. I don't know, but that's a really good question and another good thing to figure out. All right, moving on. <laughs>